Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today I'm going to talk you through my personal favorite notions that make sewing a lot easier and more efficient for me. So it's not going to be so much of a tutorial video as much as things that make my life a lot easier when it comes to quilting. I was originally going to do 10 and then there were 12 and then there were 13. So we're doing a baker's dozen. So a baker's dozen of my favorite tools to use ever. And Almost all of these you can get on our website at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If we don't carry it, I'm going to put a link to where you can get it on Amazon so you can get it from there. So let's get started. So all time favorite, of course you need a good thread. My favorite is Aurifil thread. They go through a special process that makes it less linty and it also makes it really strong. So my favorite, favorite, favorite one to use is their white in 50 weight. So that's number 20. 21 you can see that and as you can see I use a lot of this I went through two spools last week alone um, but that's I do a lot of sewing so these big spools have 1300 meters on them that is a lot of lot of thread when I was doing my book I did 12 quilts they were all lap to bed size and I went through two of these for that so to go through two in a week that means I had already been using them very heavily but this is what I use this color I use for all of my piecing for everything um, occasionally if I run out of that I will use color 2515 because this is a nice light gray and so that will not show up when you are piecing things either and then I've got a rainbow of my collection for when I get to the actual quilting part and I want it to show. So I use this thread for both piecing and quilting and I get great results on my home sewing machine. And so this leads me to favorite notion number two and that is the thread case that RFL has made for all the spools to go in. You can fit 12 in a case. So I can fill two of these and I'm not ashamed of it. I really like their thread. Um, but I share my house with two dogs and a cat and so pet hair is a constant battle in my house and so this is how I keep all of the animal fur that floats around in the air no matter how often I clean off of my thread. It also will keep it free of dust. You can put it in a drawer and keep the light out and if you're going somewhere to sew with friends and you think you might need a couple of different spools it's really easy to stash in your bag and just go with it. So the cases are really nice and convenient and they can hold all your threads. You can put them in random order if you're like me and you have a problem with that. But color 21 or 2021 for the white is my favorite, 50 weight, and then the big spool, the 1300 meter spool. That is my hands down favorite thread. And then the box is nice when you start to get a little bit of a collection and you wanna keep it free of dust, debris, cat hair, dog hair, you know, the things that happen with life, so number one and two are right there. So probably the next one I use all the time is this Friskers micro tip. They're embroidery scissors. What's great about this is there's a spring on the inside. So if I close it, it's going to pop open on its own. So if you have hand issues and I do because I sew a lot, um, but if you have arthritis or anything like that, this is really great because you don't have to reopen the scissors. They're gonna do that on their own. And when you're done and you don't wanna use them anymore, you just slide this little bit up and they stay close. They are very pointy, they are very sharp. So this is really great for when you're having to trim threads or when you are cutting chain piecing bits apart. It's not really good if you're cutting like big sections of something out, but for all the little things I have to do, this is great. And so this is probably one of my most used tools that I have. Okay, so next up is the ergonomic rotary cutter from Ulfa. Now, as I just said, I've got some hand issues. We do a lot of cutting in the shop. And so, um, you know, my hand and then my pointer finger sometimes gets really sore. Um, but with this one, I find that I don't have to put as much pressure on my pointer finger when I'm using it because it's more ergonomically developed as opposed to having to like really like move your arm at an unnatural angle when you're cutting. And then it automatically returns to safety position when you let go of it, which is really great when you have young kids around like I do. And you can pop this little red part and that locks it in place. So now when I squeeze it, it won't come out at all. 
So that's really a great feature if you've got little ones around to be able to lock that. I realize as they get older, they can figure out how to press the button and open it up, but hopefully you have taught them that this is a dangerous tool. But I really love this because of the ability to not be so hard on my hands when I'm cutting. And then also that locking feature and that it automatically goes back in the safety position, which is just huge for me having a four-year-old running around. So while we're talking about hand issues, uh, this is a large ergonomic seam ripper. You can see it has really nice curves on it that fit in the palm of your hand. And there's a nice little flat part right here that your thumb can hang on to. That way, when you are cutting, you have it and it fits in the whole palm of your hand. So when you do have to rip a seam, I prefer this hands down over the tiny little one that came with my machine because I can grip it nicely. I can get done when I need to get done. It doesn't hurt my hands and I'm good to go. And so this is one of my favorite tools for when I do have to rip. And I know some people call it unsewing. That just sounds too polite. You gotta rip it out, you screwed it up. And I like my ergonomic seam ripper to do that. All right, so this guy, I'm not flicking you off, I promise, is my uh, Nimble Thimble. And I know that sounds like a really weird name. So when I started to quilt, I had like the big metal thimbles and I have a really big collection, like embarrassingly large collection of, um, uh, decorative thimbles, but I can never get the hang of the metal thimble working it through the, um, the fabric as, either with hand quilting or with, uh, binding. And so I found these nimble thimbles and for me, I have small hands. I have to use a size medium and it is leather. And then there is a little metal tip, kind of like if you had you know, metal toed shoes or something, but obviously a lot thinner because it's just to protect the tip of your finger from the needle going through. And I find that I'm really easily able to work and move my needle through because I feel like I have control and I can feel where everything is, but it still protects my finger. Now these things don't last forever because they are leather. So eventually sometimes the needle will pop through the side. Occasionally my dog will eat them. They always come out eventually. So we haven't had any big vet bills because of it. Um, but I really like it. And even though I have to replace him every once in a while, this is my favorite thimble ever because it's really like the only one that I've been able to get to work for me. All right, so now we're getting more into the convenience tools. So this is my favorite brand of pin. They are flower head pins. And they're cute and pink, which is always good. And I think we have some cat hair in here because like I said, constantly battling it. Um, I really like them because they have this nice flat flower head on them. And so they're really easy to grip when you're trying to pull it out. And the needles will go through fabric very easily. Um, they're perfect for paper piecing because they lay nice and flat underneath the fabric as you're working with it. And then they're just really easy to grip and pull out when you're pulling pins as you're sewing through something. So I really like these. This is my favorite one. They come in this nice little tin and they fit nicely in it. And so I just kind of keep the tin that they come in and that's what I use for all of those. Okay. so. Ulfa. I love my Ulfa frosted rulers and obviously I couldn't just do it with a six and a half inch square ruler. A six by 24 is pretty essential um, as well if you're going to get into quilting. But the reason why I like these, we'll pull out a piece of fabric so you can see what I mean, is the frosted bit of it kind of helps the, the best thing I can say is it puts like a transparency. Like if you've ever done anything with Photoshop, it's like that. I can still really easily see where my lines are to cut on here because it almost makes it a little whiter um, behind that. So even though I have this really dark fabric and my lines are dark, I can still real easily see where my lines are, where my numbers are. Um, so I like the entire line of Ulfa Frosted, but the reason why I put the six and a half inch on this is because once I've got everything cut, um, when I've gone through my initial cutting instructions for the six by 24 inch ruler, from then on out, 
this baby is all I need. Um, I can throw it in my bag when I'm going to quilt and if I need to square something up, usually I can do it with this, nine times out of 10. When I first started quilting, I had a six by 24 inch ruler, I had a six and a half inch square ruler and I had a 12 and a half inch square ruler and that was all I had for years and that was all I needed. So, but the six and a half is really versatile. It's really great when you are on the go and so this is my favorite ruler and that's why it made the must have list. All right, so next up are friction gel pens. I really love these things. They come in multiple colors. We have purple, pink, and black at the shop, and that is pretty much all I need to do what I need to do for the most part. They're great because you can mark on fabric with them and the line will go away with heat. Now, if your quilt is ever exposed to freezing temperatures, 32 degrees or below, then the ink will come back. But if you just iron it again, it'll go away and you're good. So I know a lot of people hate on these because they're like, oh, it'll come back if it gets cold. Well, you know what? Just iron it and it'll go away again. I'm not concerned about it. I have a quilt that's traveling all over the country that I marked the heck up out of with uh, these friction gel pens when I was quilting it and I haven't heard any problems. And it literally has been all over the country, shipped all over the place. So like, it's fine. Like you have my permission to use these, just tell people if lines come back, go ahead and give it an iron and they'll go away. So I'm gonna show you how this works. I've drawn a line right in the middle of my quilt block. It's white. So I'm gonna take my iron and I just like turned it back on. So it's not super hot yet. So it might take a little bit longer to go away. Oh, no, first, first thing, it's already going away. So you just go over the hot iron and the line will disappear. And so I use this whenever I have to mark um, on my quilt blocks when I'm piecing or uh, when I am quilting and I'm trying to give myself a guide on where to turn if I'm doing ruler work or something. So now our line is gone, we're good to go. There's nothing to worry about. And again, if this is ever exposed to freezing temperatures, the line will come back, then we can just press it again and it'll go away. So this is my all time favorite marking tool is the friction gel pens. While I have my fabric out, this is one of the items that we don't carry in the shop. So you're gonna have to click on the link below to get it on Amazon. This was actually given to me by one of our customers and it is awesome. So this came from a hair supply store. When you spritz it, that comes out as like an aerosol mist. And so that way um, you don't get droplets of fabric from your spray bottle and you can fill it with water or your favorite spray starch by Mary Ellen's Best Press. And so when you spritz it, it just kind of mists the whole thing. So it's like an aerosol spray as opposed to the little spritz of things. And I actually got that quite wet just with those couple little spritz. So I don't like to put water in my iron. Um, I don't have it out now, but I've got the nice Ulfa one that I use the majority of the time. And I don't want water to potentially screw it up. So this is what I use when I wanna get something super flat is I use some sort of spray. And this is really awesome because sometimes if you use a spray bottle and you spritz it out, you can get water droplet marks on here. But this you're not going to because it's just going to mist at you and be fine. So that's really fun and cool. Um, so you can get these at hairdresser shops like Sally Beauty or we've got a link to it in the video description below where you can get it on Amazon. Okay, so you have seen the cut and press in like almost every video I've done. They come in two sizes. This one's really nice because it works really well for almost everything you need. And it's great for if you travel or if you have a small sewing space like I do. This is actually my sewing room that I'm filming in right now. It is a nine by 12 sunroom. There is not room for anything. I have an ironing board. It mostly hangs on the wall and looks pretty because there usually isn't room to put it out in my sewing room. So this is like, a lifesaver for me because I can have my ironing right next to me. I can press everything. I don't have to fiddle with a big iron and try to find a place for it. I can just do what I need to do. And for almost everything, unless I have to press fabric that's still on the yard, this will be all I need. Even if I'm pressing fat quarters, I can do it on here in sections. And here's a really fun part. You can flip it over and it's a cutting mat. So you've seen me use this in all the videos. I can just flip it back and forth and I can trim everything up and then I can press it. And then if I have to trim again, I just flip it right back over and it's really nice. It's really easy. Um, they do get a little discolored with time just from your iron, just like your regular ironing board would be, but they last really a long time. 
They're very sturdy, I love it. And they're really easy to take with you. So like the pocket that's on the outside of your sewing machine carrier, I will slip this in along with any rulers I'm taking and I'm just ready to go. All right, so don't judge these gloves by the condition they're in now because I quilted with them and they're blue currently. But um, these are machiners quilting gloves. I use them with like everything. Anytime I'm doing any binding, if I'm working on the jelly rug, if I'm doing walking foot or free motion quilting on my home sewing machine, I use them. They will take on the color of whatever quilt you're working on. Or if you use something like a pounce pad, I used a blue pounce pad with this the last time, the color will get on the gloves. You can wash them, but it doesn't transfer to the next quilt. So like if you're working on a red quilt, they get a little red and then you go work on a white quilt, you don't have to worry about any of like the color and linty stuff transferring. Even this blue is not gonna come off on anything. I used it when I was working on the entire Jelly Roll rug and no blue transfer to anything. What's great about them is they're one, they're really lightweight. So if it's summertime, you can still use them and you won't get too hot. And two, there's little grippies on the fingertips that help you move fabric without a lot of wrist strain or upper back strain, which is really important when you are doing quilting on your home sewing machine or applying binding on a quilt. I, I won't do either of those things without this. And I use them a whole lot when I was working on the Jelly Roll rug as well. So let me show you kind of how this works. I'm gonna go grab my Jelly Roll rug. This is the second Jelly Roll rug that I did. So here is me trying to move it with a glove and it moves really easily. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure, I'm just using the fingertips and the grippies that are on it. So now when I do it with my hand, it's a little bit harder to move everything around as easily. And this is really more evident when you're working with a piece of like a fat quarter or something that you're quilting. It just is so much easier to move everything around when you have the grips on your fingers than um, otherwise so this just it really helps me grip everything real nicely helps me move it around and again i use them anytime i bind a quilt anytime i do free motion quilting or um walking foot quilting on my home sewing machine and i use it a lot when i was working on the jelly roll rugs as well just because it helps me grip the fabric and deal with all that extra weight without having wrist or hand strain or in my upper shoulders and back all right so my last notion isn't really a notion it's a scrapbooking case um, so I'm going to put a link to this exact model in the description below. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it is an Iris scrapbooking case. It's meant to hold 12 and a half inch or 12 inch paper, but the inside dimensions are large enough to hold a 12 and a half inch quilt block. So they're great for when you're working on projects because I don't know about you, but I have problems keeping things organized. And so I have one of these for every single project that I'm working on and everything that is needed for the project project is in the box. So that way, if I'm going to go sew somewhere else, I can just grab the box and go. Or if I decide I'm going to put that project away for a little bit, I can just add it to the stack and bring it back out when it's all ready and not have to worry that I've lost something. Um, this is also really good for me at the shop because I'm not the only person who cleans up there. And this way people can just put it in the stack and I haven't lost binding or something that's supposed to go with something. Um, they are stackable. So they will, there's like little stuff on the bottom that fits over grooves here. So I can stack them all up. I've got about a dozen, which I feel like is not terrible for the number of uh, UFOs that I currently have going, especially since some of them are gonna be finished up pretty quickly. Um, some of them, of course, are longer going projects. But I really like them because I can fit, like this is everything for a large lap is in here. I've even got a ruler in there. I often will throw like my scissors, my seam wrapper, my rotary cutter, this, my pins, like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, go quilt somewhere with my friends or go on a trip and bring this with. I, you know, it's all in the box, it all fits in there. And like for this one, this one has a couple projects in it. I have a little bit left. I only made three of the um, quilt as you go placemats instead of all four. And so I've got some stuff left over from that. And then I've got some binding for another quilt that I did around the same time that hasn't been quilted yet. So that's all ready to go. And in there for whenever it is that I get to it, I know where it's at and I know where to grab it. So I love these. They really help keep me organized. And 
back to my cat and dog hair problem, they keep all the cat and dog hair off of all of this. So if you have that problem where your things are collecting dust or animal fur is getting on them, this is a great way to keep everything neat, organized, and ready to go uh, for when you're ready. So that's my 12 favorite sewing notions. I'd love to hear what your favorite sewing notions are. Pop them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to give this a try or any of these things a try, we have links to where you can get everything in the description box below. Again, we have almost everything except the sprayer and the scrapbook bins that I use to keep all my projects in um, at our shop and the others you can get from Amazon. So thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting.